So we are seeking sunshine in honor of Juneteenth weekend today with the latest chapter in Liberation Station's story of success. We first told you about the little bookstore that could several years ago when Victoria and Dwayne Miller realized they couldn't go to a local bookstore and find anything that represented their two boys. And they had to change that. So these poets and writers and literary lovers decided to go on a nationwide hunt, finding every and all books that not only gave their boys, but anyone who came through their pop-up bookstore, a true vantage point of the black experience. Well, they would find those books, stack them in their home, sell them to you online or through their pop-up bookstore. Liberation Station was the place to go for all books by black authors, illustrators, and also books featuring positive stories with characters of color. Well, clearly the community responded with the help of grants, crowdfunding, because the Scott Miller dream, Liberation Station, went from pop-up to permanent. And that's where we find Victoria and Dwayne right now, live from their new brick and mortar bookstore in Raleigh, North Carolina. Guys, great to see you again. Great, great to, to see, see you. you. So great to see you. My well, goodness. hey, and this this was your dream, you know, a, f a few years ago. Yes. So let's start with you, Victoria. How does it feel to actually have th an actual bookstore now? I know, like watching the little montage right before we came on, I'm in, in tears, honestly, because um, to know that our advocacy for our children and wanting them to have a limitlessness to their humanity um, that it would manifest into this. We are just so incredibly proud and grateful for the way the community has supported us, um, for the way that we are able to love each other on a deeper level <laughs> and love our kids <laughs> on a deeper level. We are um, just grateful and, and overwhelmed with just gratitude right now. Thank you. Oh. Dwayne, it sounds like you've got another love poem to write here uh, because of this uh, renewal in the, uh, in the marriage. I'll be waiting. I'll be standing by because I've heard your other ones. So, Dwayne, what did creating? OK, good. What did creating this bookstore, Dwayne, teach you about access to books? Right. I, I know when you had your boys, you guys were shocked at how hard it was to actually find solid cultural books for Langston and Emerson. Um, your boys, named after great poets, by the way, for those that don't know. Um, but you couldn't <laughs> find books, you know, with characters that not only looked like your boys, right, but represented them in an inspiring light. So what did you learn from this whole journey, Dwayne? I learned that this journey is actually a very healing experience uh, for an adult. I see what it does for kids, but what I didn't expect was the impact that it would have on me personally and realize the difference that something like that could have made in my own life, in my own journey. And I mm -hmm. find myself picking up uh, different titles and books, like just like one of the kids do and reading the stories. And I feel the joy coming, you know, and it's definitely <laughs> been a amazing experience. And Victoria, you know, your selection is incredible. Uh, now from black authors to the black experience, you even have an entire wall there of banned books. I want to ask you about that. Why did you, de why did yeah. you guys de decide to dedicate an entire wall to the banned books? Well, for one, I think banning books limits the access to the world that would make a child whole. And when we think about having a conversation surrounding banned books, I realized that you're not giving children the opportunity to make their own decisions, to make up their mind about the world that they exist in. And how can they become contributors um, if they are, if the text that would give them access to this world is being removed. And so we've partnered with educators, black educators from all across the country to not only include the books that are being banned, challenged, and removed from classrooms. So we're also asking educators, what would you want to teach in your classroom? And so on the banned book wall, you will have a picture of that educator, the school district they're coming from, why their book was, why the book was banned, and what they hope to gain from it being uh, able to be accessed here in our space. Wow, I love that. You know, you, you basically lay yeah. out the whole story. Um, and Dwayne, tell me, tell me about the anchor section and, and how you hope this will open up, you know, intergenerational dialogue between kids and adults. So the anchor section is a section that we have that pairs uh, similar topics 
for an adult and for a child. Mm -hmm. It can really help as a gateway to have complex conversations or just to find uh, levels of similar uh, areas of similar interest between a parent and their child. Uh, one thing that sometimes happens is that parents and children today can have difficulty communicating with that generational gap and then all the changes that have occurred. So this is really an opportunity to bridge that gap and bring us closer together. And as uh, we mentioned when we first did your story, you know, you guys are poets and writers. I mean, you you live what you, you live your work. So I understand yeah. now, uh, Victoria, you have a book coming out. So tell me how that integrates your love, your literary love, but also your love for art. Absolutely. So I have a book coming out with uh, the Baker and Taylor imprint, Paul Pence Publishing, and it's called The Museum Lives in Me. And I was excited to be able to create this body of work that is now a series that will travel all over the world. Um, my goal when working in art spaces and seeing art spaces, taking our children to art spaces, is that we are missing from the equation, uh, the full spectrum of our human light as black folks, as a community is missing from a uh, majority of art spaces. So I wanted to create a book that would not only highlight underrepresented artists, but would ensure that we would create a pathway to be able to explore art concepts in our own human museums. So I'm excited to have just, you know, signed with uh, Paul Prince Publishing and to be able to have that book come out March 2024. All right, I can't wait to read it. And I love looking at the recent yeah. pictures of you guys. Emerson and Langston have gotten so big. I know they're out on the farm today. Yes. I wish I would have had yeah. them yeah. with the whole family, yeah. Yeah. but it's summer, it's summer. All right, and I know they'll be right. reading books later, so maybe I'll catch Absolutely. up with them later. Yeah. Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Victoria good. and Dwayne. Yes, it was great Thank to see you, you and congratulations. Thank you. We love you, Thank you. bye. The feeling is mutual, guys. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.